Shalom. I've got something really cool to share with you. Um, and this is something that would not be discovered were it not for the Hallelujah Scriptures. Because they are so diligent about um, uh, interpreting the original uh, manuscripts, the original languages of the Word. And um, there's this real interesting set of scriptures, four of them, that uh, uh, reveal some uh, reveal actually the uh, the harpazo the rapture in the old testament i've always been aware of three of these uh, scriptures but uh, like i said because of the hallelujah scriptures and uh, their consistency in interpreting the uh, original hebrew um, there's a real powerful uh, scripture that's uh, added to these other three. Let's see, how do I do this? Um, where the, uh, the four scriptures I'm going to cite are uh, Psalm 16.10, Psalm 12.1, Micah 7.2, and Isaiah 57.1. Um, the, the, the fourth one that I've just recently discovered is Psalm 1610. And, uh, I'm going to start with that one because it's, um, it's a scripture, prophetic scripture that, um, reveals the, uh, the death and the resurrection of our Messiah. Now, um, well, let me start by reading that one. That's um, Psalm, actually, Tehillim 16 and 10. Uh, in the uh, Hallelujah Scriptures, it reads, for you do not leave my being in the grave, neither let your kind one, your kind one is capitalized. Uh, you do not leave my being in the grave, neither let your kind one see corruption. Now, um, people, you know, David wrote the Psalms, and uh, people would say that um, David was talking about or referring to himself there. Um, however, if you look at Acts chapter 13 and verse 35, um, we read, For this reason he also says in another Tehillah, in another psalm, you shall not give your kind one to see corruption. Uh, and it goes on, and um, Paul, the Holy Spirit, the uh, Ruach Spirit through Paul, is uh, making it clear that uh, Psalm 1610 is not referring to David, but to the Messiah. But, you know, in the NIV, the Psalm 1610 uh, it says, you will not abandon me to the grave in the NIV, uh, or let your holy one uh, see decay. The King James says that you will not leave my soul in Sheol, and you will not allow your holy one to see corruption. Now, the original Hebrew there that's being interpreted as holy one is the word chasid. It's Strong's number H2623. 
And uh, initially it means kind one. Um, it could also be interpreted as pious, godly, saint, or merciful one. But um, what's so cool is that the Hallelujah Scripture is the only one who interprets it there as kind one. And, uh, you know, this just goes to show you when, when men are interpreting uh, the original manuscripts from their original languages into English, and I imagine other languages as well, they get themselves involved and they're not so diligent to just interpret what is written. A um, wonderful example of that is in um, Philippians. Um, it's one of my favorites. Where um, it's Philippians, I believe it's chapter 3. Yeah, Philippians uh, chapter 3. And if, uh, if you look at uh, verses um, 10 and 11, you'll see in verse 10 the word resurrection, and then in verse 11 you'll see again the word resurrection. But in the original language, uh, verse 10 is uh, anastasis, which is resurrection, but verse 11 is Ex anastasis, which means out of the resurrection. And, uh, you know, men look at that and they go, oh, uh, you know, it must be a mistake. I don't know what they think, but they apply their own, uh, their own logic and they say, well, you know, just, just say, you know, resurrection. Because, you know, we believe that Paul meant that. Uh, that's not being diligent. You should just interpret verbatim as best you can what's there and you know this is another example with Psalm 1610 um, they see uh, Hasid and um, they know that this is a reference to the Messiah so they go oh you know let's let's write uh, holy one we'll capitalize it and of course holy is a um, a pagan word um, it really should either be the pious one or the godly one or the merciful one, but the, uh, the, the strongest and the most initial interpretation into English would be the kind one. And so that's what Hallelujah Scriptures did uh, because they're diligent to be uh, real accurate. Now the cool thing about what they did is um, this reference to the kind one um, Suddenly, Psalm 1610 ties in to Psalm 12, 1, Micah 7, 2, and Isaiah 57, 1. Where uh, Psalm 12, 1, Micah 7, 2, Isaiah 57, 1, they're, uh, they're scriptures that are referring to uh, the called out ones being taken up at the Harpazo, the rapture. And um, now, with... Uh, uh, the Hallelujah Scriptures interpreting uh, so diligently, uh, they reveal the, reveal the Messiah as being the kind one. And these other references and the other three scriptures we're going to look at to the kind one is a reference to the body of the kind one, the Messiah. Um, so I, I just think that's really powerful. Now, if we um, next we go to Psalm. Uh, 12, 1, <clears throat> first of all, we looked at Psalm 16, 10, and it shows that uh, it's a prophecy that the Messiah uh, will be crucified, he will die, and, um, but he will not be allowed to remain in the grave. Uh, he will be raised. The resurrection. Now, <clears throat> You have um, the first resurrection and you have the second resurrection. Uh, the second resurrection happens at the great white throne judgment. Um, we read about it in Revelation. Um, 
where everyone is raised from the dead. And uh, these are all unbelievers at that point, and they are judged. The first resurrection um, is the resurrection of the Messiah and the Harpazo, the rapture. Now, um, these are not different events, first resurrection, second resurrection. They're, they're separate categories. The first resurrection, you know, um, we have been raised in Christ. Um, we are already resurrected. We are already seated in high places. Um, it's, uh, it's a category. It's not an event. So um, we see the resurrection of the Messiah, um, which includes the called out ones, um, those who are dead in Christ, are risen first at the Harpazo, and then uh, shortly after that, we who are still remaining are raised up with them to meet the Master in the air and be with Him forever. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Now we look at uh, Psalm 12, verse 1, and um, in the Hallelujah Scriptures it reads, uh, Save Yahweh, for the kind one is no more. Uh, you might read that as like, Help Yahweh, for the kind one is no more. Uh, this word um, save or help is yasan, and it, it, it um, expresses... Uh, languidity, um, a feeling of weakness. Um, it's a crying out to uh, Yahweh that the kind one is no more. And it goes on to say, for the trustworthy have ceased from among the sons of men. They have ceased. Um, here, uh, the... Um, where it says they have ceased, or uh, ceases to be, um, it's um, Strong's number H1584, it's uh, Gemar, it's uh, talking, it's not saying they ceased like they all dropped dead, it's talking about an end, it's talking about something that comes to completion, and it talks about something coming to perfection. So, um, you know, in the original uh, language, it says, The trustworthy have ceased from among the sons of men. It doesn't mean that they all died. Um, it means that they've come to a, a, a completion and a perfection uh, and to an end in their place in this world. Um, this is talking about the Harpazo. Now, um, we go to Micah, chapter 7, and uh, verse 2, where we read, The kind one has perished from the earth, and there is no one straight among men. The... Um, the kind one, you know, this is again in, in all of these, Psalm 16, 10, Psalm 12, 1, Micah 7, 2, Isaiah 57, 1, uh, the kind one, these are all taken from the same word, Hasid, Strong's H2623, interpreted in most other Bibles um, in Psalm 16, 10 as the Holy One, but it's the same uh, word in all of these scriptures. The kind one is the Messiah in 16, Psalm 16.10. And uh, the kind one in all these other ones is talking about the body of Christ. Um, now, in uh, again with uh, Micah 7.2, it says uh, um, he has perished. Where um, Again, in uh, the NIV, it says the, God, the godly man has been swept from the land. That's pretty good. 
Uh, that's a pretty good interpretation. The NIV often does a pretty good one. The King James says, the godly man has perished out of the earth. Perished is not a, a good word. I mean, we all think of that as like they died. Um, but that word there in the King James that says perished, in the NIV it says swept from the land. In the Hallelujah Scriptures, uh, it says perished. But that word there uh, in Strong's exhaustive concordance is uh, number H6. <laughs> Very simple, early uh, listing. And it's uh, the word ebad. And it means vanished. It means to wander away. And it means also, in effect, to lose oneself. You know, we say, um, boy, you know, I had such a good time. I lost myself in that experience. Uh, I think that's a good description of the heart puzzle. You're going to lose yourself. Uh, you're going to get so swept away. Uh, I think the NIV does the best job in terms of Micah 7 too, when it says, um, it should say the kind one, uh, has been swept from the land. Swept away uh, would be the best uh, interpretation there uh, for English uh, for the uh, interpreting the original Hebrew and what it's trying to uh, describe. Certainly not perished. Uh, so again, um, Micah 7 2, the kind one has been swept off the earth. That's the harpazo. And there, there's no one straight among men. You know, in, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it says that uh, he who restrains evil will do so until. He is Gnomahi, he's taken, he is uh, suddenly vanished uh, due to a wedding. And then the lawless one will be revealed, the Antichrist will be revealed. Um, when he who uh, restrains evil is, uh, is taken, evil is no longer going to be restrained. The world's going to get crazy. And here in Micah 7 2, it says, um, the kind one has been swept off the earth, and there is no one straight among men. There's no good people left. This darkness and evil is now no longer being restrained. That's uh, being reiterated there. Finally, um, we go to Isaiah chapter 57, uh, verse 1. And um, in the NIV, it says... Uh, the righteous perish. King James Version, same thing. It says the righteous perish. Um, in the Hallelujah Scriptures, it reads, The righteous one has perished, and no one takes it to heart. No one takes it to heart. And kind men, here we go with the kind one again. That's that same, uh, that same word, chasid. Uh, kind men are taken away while no one understands that the righteous one is taken away from the presence of evil. I mean, this uh, Isaiah 57.1, Yeshayahu, Isaiah, uh, I think is the clearest uh, reference to the Harpazo. Um, here, um, the, the righteous one is, uh, Strong's H6662, Sadig. Um, and again, the righteous, it's the same word, Sadig, righteous, uh, lawful and just, as, um, the antithesis of the lawless one. This is talking about the lawful um, again, uh, where it says uh, perishes in all these versions, again, that's uh, Strong's H6, Ebad, um, which um, doesn't mean perished. It's really a, a poor interpretation. Um, I think the NIV nails that one the best. I don't know why they didn't interpret it. See here, 
the NIV, inconsistent, because in one place, um, in uh, Micah 7.2, they take this word, abad, and they interpret it as um, being swept from the earth. But here in Isaiah uh, 57.1, it's the same exact word, abad, and they say, you know, perish, uh, you know, uh, let's try and be consistent, please. This is why it's so good to, to when you see key words, go to the original language and do a little study and see what's really being said in the original language, in the original understanding, in the original intent of um, Elohim and what he's expressing to us. So here again, Isaiah, the righteous one has been swept off the earth and no one takes it to heart. You know, the harpazo is going to happen and uh, nobody's going to take it to heart. Why? A lot of deception will be going on. And um, kind men, chasid, are taken away. And again, it says, while no one understands that the righteous one uh, is taken away. I think, you know, taken away in the original language, I would interpret that into English by saying that the righteous one is gathered in from the presence of evil. Again, um, I will not allow uh, my chosen ones to suffer the day of my wrath, Yahweh says. <clears throat> uh, no one, but you know, no one understands. Kind men are taken away while no one understands that the righteous are gathered in or taken away from the presence of evil, the, uh, the lawless one, the Antichrist, and uh, the day of Yahweh, where he, <laughs> he expresses his wrath. So um, this is just an addition uh, an additional uh, note um, for my uh, my playlist concerning the rapture, the harpazo. Um, in uh, when people say, "Oh, the rapture doesn't exist in the Old Testament," well, here's uh, four more scriptures uh, where it does. Uh, first of all, Psalm sixteen ten saying that the Messiah will be resurrected. That's the rapture. That's the harpazo. That's the first fruit of the first resurrection. And then in Psalm 12, 1, Micah 7, 2, and especially Isaiah 51, it uh, talks about uh, the harpazo happening. Nobody takes it to heart. They don't understand that Yahweh has removed his chosen ones, his called out ones, ecclesia, um, that's different than saints or elect, which we see in the book of Revelation after chapter uh, 3. Um, that he, uh, nobody understands that he uh, takes them off the earth. He sweeps them off the earth um, to uh, keep them from the evil and the confusion that is about to uh, come upon the world. So uh, that's that. Shalom.